some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. This guy I work with, Scott Jenkins, this guy is the biggest bandwagon fan of all times. I mean, he's just your ordinary, average, run-of-the-mill employee, the kind of guy you hardly even notice is there, right? And on last year, this dude did no dick about the Seahawks. This year, however, he's showing up every Friday, dressed up in Seahawks gear. He's got Russell Wilson's screensaver on his, on his computer. And he's got a ton of stats and predictions for the season. He's ready to talk your ear off about. Ready to talk my ear off about. Me. Everybody knows that I'm the go-to guy when it comes to Seahawks conversations. Insightful, accurate Seahawks talk. That's me, dude. And he's trying to like, replace me as that. Like, we don't notice that he just jumped on the bandwagon? I hate this dude. And he's got tickets. The dude got tickets to the clink. Good seats, too. And he gets paid like I do. Shit pay! I get shit pay. You know that. You know I get shit pay. You know what I get paid? Shit. You know, I wish, I wish, I pray that he would die. I mean, seriously, I wish like someone would kill him. And, and I did, I prayed to God. I, I said, you know, big man, if you're up there, because you know I'm an atheist, man, like a staunch atheist. I don't believe. But I was like, you know, big man, if you're up there, you know, if you want a lifelong believer in me, you know, take this guy out. Nobody will miss him. <laughs> ah! Ah! Why aren't you listening to me right now? You should be listening to me. I'm trying to express Did you just shut the hell up? Jesus, listen to yourself. Just shut up. Oh, bandwagon fan? <laughs> you want to talk about bandwagon fan? You are the biggest bandwagon fan I know. Hell, two months ago, you couldn't tell me the difference between Russell Wilson and Gorbachev. Look at you. You are a bandwagon fan. But did I care? Did I shut you out like some dog in the street? No, I didn't because I care. Because I'm a Seahawk fan. And I bring the poor and the hungry and the starving on in. But you, no. No, you, you're beneath that. You're beneath all of it, and you make me sick. You literally make me sick. You're making me sick. You want me to vomit on you? Is that what you want? It's what I want. I want to vomit on you. You're gross. You're disgusting. You're subhuman, and you should die. You, you should die. How about that? Maybe you should die. Maybe I should take a knife or, or, or a spoon. A spoon and dig out your heart. And why a spoon, you say? Why? Because that's dull, you twit. It'll hurt more. Be gone with you. Be gone with you from my home where I eat and sleep and live because I can't look at you. Out! Go! I'm going! We're still on for tomorrow, right? Pussy. Tell your bitch I said. What up, you team? My name is Prime TTC. This your boy, Mr. P. Town 49. Back again with my Seattle Sea Thoughts hate group video. I mean, what can I say that hasn't already said, been said in the prior clips? I can't stand these bitches from top to bottom. From your punk ass owner down on to your punk ass Ellen DeGeneres, one of these fuckboy ass coach. I saw your video. It saved me the history lesson. 
Okay, I don't give a fuck about your little punk ass video. Because all that matters to me is what I see with my own two eyes. And since you guys got Pete Carroll and Russell Wilson, you guys have all been a bunch of front running, bandwagon ass bitches. And I can say that sitting all the way down in SoCal, California. Because when you guys went on your fucking Super Bowl run, before then, when the Seahawks to be found in sight. But as soon as you guys started going on your playoff run and your Super Bowl appearance, all of a sudden, Seahawks jerseys started popping up. And it's pretty funny because it's the same way, it was the same way in the TTC. What's your fine base at now? Y'all ain't nothing but a bunch of fly by night ass niggas. And that's real. You guys have been rendered to one and a half chop talkers. And I say one and a half because other than you, Super Dookie ain't no damn chop talker. But it's fucked up by his hairline. Hairline doing back pedals faster than uh, Richard Sherman does back pedals away from a damn fight. Hey, what you gonna do, boy? I'm punching you. I'm hey, doing thing, boy. So fuck out of here, bro. So yeah, you two niggas is weak sauce compared to how the, the Seahawks fan base used to be. Where the fuck is the Hawks Nest? Where the fuck is 12th Man Bread? Where the fuck is Seahawks Night? Seahawks 24 7. Rob English. Like I said, fly by night ass niggas. And the sad part about it is, you guys are not even doing that bad. You guys are actually a pretty good team. And you niggas still packed up and left. Y'all don't know the meaning of real struggle. We just finished going through a 2-14 and 14 ass season. And we still here. Standing strong. Ready to stand up in you niggas chest. So like I said, man. You guys fucking fan base is pathetic. Okay. On to this damn game. I believe we can go up into the pink and walk away with this damn win. For the simple fact that you guys' offensive line is charged. I mean, and you didn't do shit to upgrade it. You went to Jacksonville, of all people, and got Luke the Joke Jokel. Uh, returning to your team is uh, Jermaine Effetti, and he's trash. I mean, I believe the only good offensive lineman you got is the center you guys drafted out of LSU this past draft. But other than him, you guys entire line is trash. Your run game is man. I mean Carson, you know, he did a couple splash plays against Green Bay, but nothing special. You guys are wide receivers, other than Baldwin and the little fast motherfucker you got number 16, not impressed. And I think our corners are more more than capable of limiting the big plays you guys' weapons. Um not afraid of Jimmy Graham. He hasn't been the same since his days in New Orleans. So not really, not that really worried about you guys' offense. Um, our defense just has to do a great job of getting to Russell Wilson, throwing her off his timing, and getting some sacks. And I think we can do that. Because like I said, you guys' offensive line is trash. Um, on the offensive side of the ball for us, um, Brian Hoyer just needs to do a better job of getting rid of the football and stop holding on to it. Because our offensive line is not, it's not piss poor, but it's not great either. So Brian Hoyer needs to realize that and start getting rid of the ball faster. And also do a better job of surveying the field because there was quite a few plays against Carolina where he left some points off the board. Um, Trent Taylor was open in the red zone for a touchdown. He missed him. And uh, George Kittle, he was open too, but I think he got socked on that play. So yeah, like I said, he needs to do a better job of getting rid of the football. Um, also, Carlos Hyde needs to be more involved in the run game because um, for the runs that he did get against Carolina, he actually did pretty well. He was averaging five yards a carry. It's just we got away from the run game considering that Carolina got up on us. So we had to start throwing the football. Um, I also would like to see Matt Breda get more involved. He's a pretty fast, shifty back, and if you give him room to run, he can he can take it to the house. Um, 
But where I see us taking advantage of you guys defensively is you guys struggle when it comes to teams coming out of multiple wide receiver sets. Three wides, four wides, and shit like that. Just pretty much spreading you guys out. Um, Green Bay did it with uh, number 18, I forget his name, and also Jordy Nelson. You guys struggle with speed wide receivers. And I think Marquise Goodwin, he's more than capable of getting off. I know he dropped a uh, long bomb last game, but he's not really known to be a player that drops the football a lot. So I expect him to rebound from last game. And also, I expect to see Trent Taylor get busy in the slot. He's one of those top receivers. He's not really a speed demon, but he's quick and he knows where to sit down in zones and get open to catch the football. And when he does catch the football, he can break tackles and create yak yards. Um, I also expect our reliable weapon and Pierre Garçon to get his touches. And I expect us to do enough to come away with this win. I don't expect this to be a high scoring game for the simple fact that we're going inside enemy territory. And we kind of always kind of struggled up there. But this year I think we have enough. And you guys, you guys' offensive line is bad enough to where we can escape with a win. Um, that's pretty much all I got. This your boy, Mr. P-Town 49, from P-Town all the way to the Bay, for another faithful all day. And I'm out, peace. Going, there's two minutes left. Huh? Where y'all going? Where y'all going? There's two minutes left. Where y'all going? Why y'all leaving? There's two minutes left. Come on now. Stick around for the game. Come on. Where y'all going? Two minutes. I repeat to the competition.